All right, Jordan Page, welcome to Gray America. How you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me on, guys. You're welcome. I can't wait to talk about this Firefly education thing. I was looking into it today. I'm like, it's comp- comprehensive. It's got so much, uh, so much potential there. I'm like, why hasn't this been done before? So really looking forward to, to talking about that. But I mean, you got lots of other uh, interesting stuff to tell us too about yourself. So maybe we can start sure. there. Just a little bit of background and I can poke around a little bit. Yeah, let's 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 dive right in. So, okay, so my name is Jordan Page. Uh, my website's jordanpage.net, um, and I'm a I'm primarily I've been a musician most of my life, and I've been I, I've toured all over the world. I've put out albums and singles, and recording artists, touring artists. And in 2006, seven, I had a, an awakening, and I, I really just was uh, struck by a song that I had written in the middle of the night that I had no idea what the song was even about. And it was very political. And I was a very apolitical person. You couldn't have dragged me into a political discussion back then. (laughs) I would have fought tooth and nail to get out of it. And I wrote this song uh, called Pendulum. And it was was like around three o'clock in the morning this this one night uh, in December of 06. And it just completely changed my life. And I became uh, an anti-war activist overnight, uh, you know, a conspiracy analyst and and a liberty libertarian freedom fighter. Um, I got involved with Ron Paul when he was running for president in 08. And my very first event that I performed at that was like a political event was the Revolution March in, in D.C. in July of 08 in front of the of the Capitol on, on the on the National Mall. And there were 15000 people. And I. I, I had it had been about six months that I had been writing new, these songs about what's going on in the world and everything I'd been learning uh, and reading about, and I thought I was going to have to start some movement, <laughs> but I didn't realize there's already this huge movement that Ron Paul had started, and it was like, oh my gosh, I, I could just kind of come in here and 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 give these folks a soundtrack, you know. And that was the first time I met Ron, and that was his last event of his campaign, and it was my very first event. Wow. And so that that really got me started and I started touring and recording music and I put out a few a couple albums and and did, did college tours and I, I, I got myself in a, a lot of trouble and good trouble, you know, and uh, then uh, Dr. Paul asked me to, to perform at quite a few of his major events in 2012 and all over the country. And I really and, and, and I had a lot of a lot of press and and radio play and uh and and i was playing for crowds ten thousand plus i mean and and I, you know i was a touring musician anyway so the, the biggest crowd i think i'd ever played to before the ron paul era was about a thousand people and you know i was like low level you know as far as like the kind of crowds i was doing and but i started playing to ten thousand plus and i i would notice you know on maybe on like a friday night I'd be playing at a bar in Maryland where I was from originally for maybe 50 people, maybe it may be 75 people who were all drinking and, you know, going through the, 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 the drunk mating ritual. And then on Saturday I'd fly out to some city and play for Ron Paul and <laughs> be playing for 10,000 people. And it was like, and they all seemed to know the words to my songs. And so it was, I'm a God guy, you know, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I was hearing very clearly, like, do you see, this is what you need to be doing. You're wasting your time, you know, doing what you used to do. Like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And you're I, you're wasting I, your time on Friday night. Your Friday yeah. night is a waste of time. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need to be, I need to be doing the original music that is about what's happening in the world. It's about you and me. It's not, you know, covers and bubblegum nonsense. And, and so I committed myself completely to it and I've been a, you know, full-time musician for many, many years wow. and ended up uh, touring with Dr. Paul and playing at a, a, quite a few of his major events on the campaign trail and continued touring for years after that. Uh, you know, in 2018, uh, I, I had a realization that I had, you know, I, I had been touring for so many years and I had missed so much at home. 
Um, not, not that I was never home because I surely was. And I, I'm, I have seven children. My wife and I have seven kids. And I, but I had missed significant chunks of, t- of time in their childhoods. And, and, and it, it hurt me like deeply. I can't even like really go into that, how deeply that hurt when I had that strong realization because they had all gotten so much bigger. Um, and it, cause, cause time seemed to fly to me when I was, do, when I was doing that all the time. And so I took some time off and got into some other businesses. You know, I, I, I got, I got involved in the medical cannabis, uh, freedom movement. You know, I, when, when Ron, uh, didn't win, a lot of people went back to sleep or they became Trumpers. And I, I, I have always been an issues guy. It's never been about cult of personality for me. And so the issues that I cared about, I continued to champion. I continued to write about and publish music about, and 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 that's that's still happening today. But uh, in in by 2018, I took some time off. I I did some other work in some other places. I got really involved in the blockchain space. I've been involved in the blockchain space since about 2011. I I, I mean actually, I remember when Bitcoin was 33 cents. That was probably about 2010. But I think I got my first Bitcoin Didn't when. I was- in 2011, I had so much Bitcoin, Darren, you wouldn't even believe. But back then it was it wasn't worth anything. But it was it was the promise of Bitcoin that we in the Ron Paul movement that we loved because it, it was a way to circumvent and the, the Federal Reserve System, which is a, a system based on blood and debt. And so we wanted to get out from under that and get and 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 create something new and and the technology was there so we 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 all were pushing bitcoin i have given more bitcoin to more people than i can uh, care to like, remember i have spent bitcoin on the <laughs> on such you know like things like t-shirts you know and smoothies at festivals and you know uh shawarma <laughs> i mean i've spent so much bitcoin i've lived on bitcoin there were several years of my life i lived on nothing but bitcoin that is how wow. i paid my bills. It's how I traveled. It's how I got paid and it's how I paid for things. Um, so I'm a Bitcoin evangelist. I, 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 I love Bitcoin and, and the promise of what blockchain technology uh, can do for the world, decentralization. So I'm, so I've, I've, I've been, I've been in that space. I, I've supported a lot of projects and over the years, I've come to understand that, you know, all of the things that I was protesting against guys, like, war and government corruption and you know, the, the, our, our monetary policy, just to name a, a few, the attacks on our liberties, you know, all of these things that I have, I spent my entire adult life protesting against are all still there and worse than ever. And, you know, I had this, a conversation with the Lord about this and the, why, and the answer I got back is that because they, they, them, those, they have control of everyone's children in the education system. They are raising up generations of every generation that comes up is raised in abject ignorance and they're being, they're being fed a, a buffet of lies and, and a very, and, and a very dark um, destructive ideology. And, that is why the culture keeps shifting further and further and further away from common sense and from mora- you know, you know, Christian morality to this hedonistic lifestyle, violent and, you know, just everyone's got their head in the sand. They're, they're just they're not even paying attention as their freedoms are being eroded right before their eyes. Everyone seems to be asleep. And, you know, we've got fluoride in the water that that makes everyone docile and brain dead. And then there's a million other reasons, but the education system is the central, uh, is the central axle that connects all these spokes on the wheel of tyranny. And so it was very clear, you know, my wife and I've been homeschooling our seven kids for 12, 13 years now. And in 2020, when the pandemic hit, we saw it coming a mile away. We knew exactly what was going on. And because we've been predicting this for a long, long time. I mean, you know, the, the Rockefeller Foundation basically published what they were going to do with Operation Lockstep and all and all those those documents. They basically t- they tell you what they're going to do before they do it. 
But if you're paying attention, you know. And if you're not paying attention, it all seems like news. So we we saw what was happening, but we were already, you know, homeschooling. We we're already living, you know, a, a, away from population centers. We have a ranch up in the Pacific Northwest. We're raising our own animals and all that. And so it didn't affect us anywhere near the way that it affected most of the world. And my wife and I have been, again, been homeschooling and she is now uh, a certified teacher uh, here. And while she was getting her, her degree in education, she got her master's degree in a year and a half that included her student teaching. Uh, while she was getting her degree, she would share with me the things that they were trying to get her to accept. Yeah. And you're laughing because you already know. Well, I, I mean, imagine. It, and, and she would show me some of the books that they had her reading. And my wife is not some 20 year old or 22 year old out of fresh out of college who's wet behind the ears. She's a seasoned veteran of all this stuff. She's been she's been with me this whole time, you know, and we and we've traveled in some pretty high circles. And so we, we get it and she gets it. And it was so scary and insidious, the agenda that they are pushing out through young teachers. They're brainwashing these teachers to disseminate a, a, a really a horrific but and diabolical plan. And it's, it's happening through the education system. And so she had an inspiration from God that we needed to do something about this and that we needed to open a center of some kind to support homeschool families. And we needed to call it Firefly so that we could teach children to be lights in all the darkness. That is the, that is the central concept of Firefly. That's why we're, we're talking today is, is, is about this project. And so as an entrepreneur, I looked at it uh, and we live in a really rural, rural area and it wasn't going to work for, for us to be able to do it as a business and open a brick and mortar place just on our own with, you know, I mean, it, it, it the economy isn't, isn't present up where we are. I said, but I had this great blockchain development team. What if we did this as a blockchain platform, decentralized, chapters could spring up anywhere and connect. We could use IPFS, the interplanetary file system, just to store and encrypt data. We could use have, a, have an underlying blockchain architecture for security, for encryption, for storing, for, for, for record retrieval, for transactions, for interoperability with games. There's so many... There's so many um, features that blockchain adds that that, the, that Web three adds in general, and so she loved that idea. So I took it to my dev team, and we spent a year and a half in the conceptual phase, figuring out if we could actually do this. Could such a system, uh, like, like a literally a K through twelve alternative to the the public private school system, could, like could, could we actually create something like this? Like you said, it hasn't been done. There are a lot of home education platforms out there, but no one has ever done this. And after a year and a half, it was abundantly clear, yes, we could. And so I started hitting the, the crypto conference circuit and, and speaking, and we got some venture capital. Uh, we, we inspired a venture capital fund and some investors to come on board, and, and we're in development. So we are literally building a digital marketplace for homeschool families, educators who have been forced out of the public school or who want to leave. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Yeah. yeah, and content creators, many deplatformed, like many friends of mine have, and you know, indie creators to all come together in in, in an education based ecosystem, a financial ecosystem. So not only are educators and content creators going to be getting paid for their offerings and their talents. But the, the, the students have a financial incentive as well. So we want to encourage the spirit of leadership and entrepreneurism all over the world, not just here in the States. And so our business model, we carve out a large amount of our revenue and repurpose it into a student treasury that we then apportion over every course that's on the platform. So when the kids meet milestones, like criteria in, e in each course, and I'm not just talking about tests. Tests are only one metric. They're, they're not the main metric, and they never should be. There's lots of different metrics. And as the kids meet these, these milestones, they, they accrue stipends with, the, with every course that they take. So by the end of the course, they've made money. 
Now, if you remember when you were in high school, if I was in high school, if I was getting paid to get A's, how many more A's do you think I would have? Oh, got? Yeah. yeah. You know, so so it's it's a really it's it's a it's a revolutionary concept. There's a lot of studies that have been done on this. That whenever there's a financial incentive, productivity in in students goes through the roof. It's a hockey stick graph every single time. I've read all these studies, and it, it's a it's an exciting thing. And and just no one's ever put it to put it to work. There's lots of lots of platforms that have incentives, but they're not real. They're they're like they're like a digital token that's only good on the platform to play, you know, some virtual game or something. That that's really all the kids get, or they just get badges as, as you know they're they're being rewarded. They're being told you did a good job, but what, what that doesn't translate to anything tangible in the real world. And so we're building a system where the students K through twelve can can earn uh, income for doing well in their studies. So that's a really exciting thing. We're also, this is also a, a pro freedom. It's a, it's a faith-based platform. Everyone's welcome, but it's a faith-based platform. So we're like our foundational principles are our are, are Christian principles. And we're, we're not allowing any you know sexual education on the platform and any discussion of sex has to do with, with, with biology. And, and, and to that end, we assert that there are only and ha only have ever been two genders, male and female. Uh, we patently reject most of the isms out there, these, the, the, these perverse ideologies, socialism, communism, and so forth. And we're, we're pushing a pro-freedom, uh, pro-capitalism, you know, pro-free market, Austrian economics uh, worldview. And uh, it's a, it's very exciting. There's a lot of people out there that have knee jerk re pulled their kids out of school over the last three years. You know, guys, honestly, in the last three years, the homeschool population in America went from under three million to over six million. Wow! Yeah, so, I was going to ask you about that. That is that is a massive, and 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 there you we all know what the reason is. You know, you can't teach little Timmy that he can be a girl at recess. You know, I mean that that's just not. You can't do that. And, and and they are doing that and they're warping millions of little children's minds and, and attacking them at the very foundation of their identity. And I mean, what is more, what is, what is more like, like central to a person's identity than what gender they are, you know? And so if you attack that and destroy that, you create the perfect consumer, you create the perfect slave. And, and that is a big part of this agenda. And, and, and also as a Christian, you know, it, it, it's written that God made us male and female. And so I look at this whole agenda, this transgender agenda as, as the, as the political agenda that it is as very anti-God and anti-family. And so we are standing for God. We're standing for family. We're standing for Liberty and, and the principles of our founders. So, uh, so yeah, so we're combining traditional family values and patriotic values with web three technologies like blockchain and Bitcoin and, you know, artificial intelligence and augmented reality, virtual reality, metaverse. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to have all, all of these. These will all be features and tools people can make use of if they want to. Now, if they don't want to, they'll have a very Web 2 experience. Firefly is, isn't going to be shoving technology down your throat. It's just going to be making it available for you to use and to teach you how to use it. And there'll yeah. be classes for parents as well. That's fantastic. What a great idea. What's yeah, your take on the Pope? What's your take on the Pope talking about the? I guess that's Catholic. So is that a Christian or a Chris? What's the real difference between Christian and Catholic? I mean, part of my ignorance, but it's, I mean, sure, it's one, sure. one Jesus and one's God. Is that like the main thing? No. Well, Darren, I was actually raised Catholic. I'm I'm no longer Catholic. I I, I walked away from Catholicism. I think in my in, in, in my mid twenties because I I for me it was not it was not a path where I was really getting spiritually fulfilled and I saw it as a system of control. I saw it as a, as, as a, a mind control system, much like, um, I mean, there's, there, there's plenty of other, other systems we could compare it to, but it's ultimately it is, it, it was not for me. It was forced on me and it was, things were never explained to me. You know, I, I, I'm a very deep thinker. I want to, I want to understand, I seek to understand things deeply and cookie cutter responses don't, don't satisfy me. And that's all I, all I ever got. And there was just, there's just so much corruption, uh, in, like fr from, from, uh, 
just, just the Catholic Church as a business, as an organization, you know, it, it's it's protected pedophiles for 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 you know centuries really, but you know, in the modern context, for many decades, and I just so many of its central tenets, I I, I realize I don't believe in. And what, while an example would be transubstantiation, which is the belief that the the bread when they do communion that the bread literally turns into the flesh of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says that God made man. It does not say that man can make God. Nowhere nowhere scripturally is this belief based. There's a, there's many many beliefs in Catholicism that are not based in scripture. And so I I I have walked away from it. But I'm, you know, I'm I'm absolutely a disciple of Jesus Christ and you know, he's the center of my world and the, you know, the foundation of my life. Well, this, and, is, this, has been, this has been coming up a lot lately for us. A lot of our guests, like, so like I didn't really, I didn't realize that about you even. So it's interesting. Um, what's, what's, Sorry, what's to, I just, to just keep going on that a bit first. So what's like, do you get along with Catholics? Do Catholics and oh, Christians sure. get along? You guys share a lot of the same stuff. Like, is there like a real difference between those two, you know, like, say i don't know obviously it's not like the, the jews and the and the muslims but you know like they seem a lot closer than all the rest of them you know what i mean almost like two hands of the same two bird wings of the same bird well catholics are christians i mean they 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 believe in jesus christ and they believe he was the son of god I mean, a, a lot a lot of the central beliefs are there but a lot of the more esoteric beliefs were shed in pro in, in the protestant reformation you know i mean like w w protestant denominations and i'm a non-denominational christian um they all have their own version like well we like this over here but we don't believe in this over here so we're going to cut that out and just do it do worship our own way and so there's a lot of categories but the central the central belief to be a christian you basically have to you know accept jesus as your savior and that he died for your sins and was crucified and rose from the dead to save humanity i mean like that's like the you know kind of a non-negotiable belief and uh, but but there's a lot of other beliefs that come along that, you know, Christians are always arguing with one another, all these different with each other about their about their doctrine and their dogma. And I, I, I tend to stay out of it. I, I know what I believe and I, I know what I know. And that's good for me. And, and, and now I don't I don't condemn other people for what they believe. But, you know, I'm not going to you know, join you over in that party. You, you're, you're welcome to worship however you want. That's part of freedom. You know, people can believe in the flying spaghetti monster if they, if it really makes them happy. But you know, when rubber meets the road, what is, what is, is, you know, I, I stand on, on my faith in that, but Catholics and Christians can absolutely get along. I have, I have lots of friends who are Catholics. My, my, my mother is Catholic. <laughs> it's well, like, I didn't yeah. mean it like get along, you know. I mean, obviously, in in the world we've made over here, we should all be able to get along, regardless of that. But I just mean, you know, if this shit like really hit the fan, you guys are kind of like, you know, it's almost well, they're, like they're all Christians. It's like the USA and Canada. You know what I mean? It's like, mm. yeah, exactly. They're all Christians. I guess that's really what I was getting at. They're all really Christians. They're just different sure. forms of it. Yeah, I, I I would I would say so. In generally speaking, I would say so. Yeah. So you asked me about the Pope. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the Pope. Um, he he has a lot of darkness around him. I I, I feel like I know way too much about him. And uh, but you know I I, I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I want to go too deep into that. But I I am not a not a fan of the papacy. Uh, I do not believe that the Pope uh, speaks for God. I do not believe that he is he is the the representative of God on earth. No, I do not. Is it worse? Is it is it like captured by evil in a way? Oh, 100 percent. Haven't you guys ever, ever looked at the, the, the they have a giant room at the Vatican yeah, yeah. that's literally shaped like a yeah. snake's head. <laughs> yeah. You know, the Pope dresses like a, like a psychedelic mushroom. He's got he's got pentagrams in his hats. I mean, it's like it, the symbolism is through the roof. The, the, this this Pope literally did a, a speaking tour of the United States several years ago where the main subject of his of his speech at every place that he went was about Jesus's failure on the cross. You know, so this is, you know, like he, he, he is embracing the new world order. He's embracing yeah. the, you know, the transgender agenda. He's embracing, climate you know, all, climate change, you know, nonsense. It's all, he, he, he is a stooge of 
the global elites. And so I'm, I'm just, you know, I, I I'm not a fan. <laughs> so sorry to keep asking about Christianity, but so what does the non-denominational look like then again? Cause I mean, same with one of our last guests, he was like, we're not, it's not, I'm non-denominational. So that's just like sort of stripping it all bit down to its bare bones in a way, kind of. It just means don't box me in, bro. You know? Okay. Like I I, I don't want to fit into your category because then right. I'm okay. then I'm tied to your category. Right. You know? Okay. Okay. Um, there's a lot of categories. I mean, every church you see on this, I'm, they're all named something different. They're all part of some sort of denomination. And yeah, it's, as a non as a non Christian or somebody that you know like is sort of interested in it, but not, you know, at a really deep level, I just have no clue what they all, what they all mean and all the, all the difference. I mean, it seems very complex. Well, I can, I can tell you um, that the way, like we started our own church up here where we live with, with some other families. And I, I, okay. yeah. I would call it more of a book of acts type church, meaning that it's a home fellowship where families get together and we worship together. We, we sing songs together. We pray together. We read scripture. We, we, we have a, we have a pastor who has helped us get kind of get started and get up and running. And it's, it started very, very small and it's grown. You know, um, I actually, am, I lead worship, which is, which is the songs uh, with my, with my wife and my son who plays piano. And then we have, we rock it out, man. We have, we have a great time. And then we, we, you know, listen to a word from either the the pastor uh, who who helped us get started, or someone from the community might have a word they want to share, and then we uh, we go through uh, like praise reports and testimonies of wonderful things that God's doing in our lives, and then we go through prayer requests. And anybody that needs prayer or wants to speak uh, can. They and then we will, you know, the whole congregation will we will all pray for every person who spoke and what whatever their need was. And it's really a Holy Spirit filled experience and God shows up every time, you know, and, and then afterwards we have a potluck meal for about three, four hours. And it's a great social time for people to connect and, and, and just fellowship together. So it's, it's really a beautiful thing. It's not stand up, sit down, kneel, sit, kneel, sit, stand, you know, like everything is scripted. Everything is exactly the same every single week. And, you know, you can, you can, live your life however you want to during the week. But on Sunday, you know, Sunday's a day for God. No, like we, we live our lives for God every day. And, uh, and, and our community is, is really a special one. I, I feel really, really blessed to, to have all these folks around. Thanks cool. for that. Great. That was a great answer. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was just at a funeral with the stand up, kneel down, sit down, kneel, sit down. It was a yep. Catholic. Um, I think it was like Ukrainian Catholic. Pretty, I spent pretty, half my life doing that, man. Pretty intense, yeah. I was, I was a pro. I mean, we grew up. I grew up sort of Protestant. I did go to Sunday school a little bit when I was a kid, but it just, it did not resonate. Yeah. I mean, I think you're what you're saying. It kind of resonates with me more now as an adult that's been through all this stuff. You know, like a lot of sure. our guests are. Some of them are born again. Some of them are becoming sort of Christian or finding their old roots in Christianity, and it's it's uh, it's interesting. Do you, do you see like an increase in that right now with people with all the, with all the symbolism yeah. I've heard, both <laughs> things. I've heard there's a lot of people going away from the church, but then it seems like there's people moving towards it too. There, I think there's a lot more people moving towards God in general. Like right. when we say the church, like yeah, I shouldn't have said the church, yeah. like the, 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 the Greek word is ecclesia, right? And, and that is, that was referring to the body of Christ, which means all the pe all the people, the corporate body of believers, you know, worldwide. That's what that means. But a lot of people, when they say the church, they think yeah. they're, it's like the Catholic Church, the institution. Yeah. And and no, I, I I I reject that. You know, and so the, uh, the 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 church is growing by leaps and bounds because people are starting to get that we really are in a battle of good versus evil. All you got to do is is just turn on the TV or get on the internet, you figure out the whole world is, is being subjugated by, by these evil forces who are, you know, hell bent on taking away everything that you have and destroying the, the world as we know it. And, and so a lot, so many people are turning to God. A lot of people have turned away from God for sure. There's no doubt. I mean, and, and that, that tug of war has been going on since time began. But we're in a very, you know, I, I'm not one of these people that claims that we're in the end times. A lot of people do that. You know, there are a lot of there, there's a lot of symbolism in, in the book of Revelations. And I would argue some of those things came true a thousand years ago. You know, um, 
but uh, but some the, some things seem to be coming true now. Maybe they maybe they come true over and over again through the ages. You know, I I I don't pretend to know what, what era that we're in. I just know that in the era that we're in, you know, I'm fighting for my my children's future, and because the future that these guys want to to see happen is is distorted, disturbing disgusting and uh and so we we have we have to build something better than what the state provides for us you know you you never you, you never let your enemy educate your kids <laughs> so and that's what we've been doing for generations and generations putting them into these indoctrination camps where they are taught to obey follow orders and fit in a box and become servants to the state you know, I mean, like that's essentially what school is. It's either that or it's a it's it's training for prison. I mean, they're, they're, those those are really like the, the stark contrast, but it 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 doesn't really it doesn't really it doesn't really work. You know, the, I mean, just national test scores in America on, on just like every subject will prove that. Um, the rest of the so many other countries around the world are are kicking our our ass in every in every way. So uh, because they're actually investing in, in their education system and they actually want their citizens educated. But, you know, the, the agenda is to bring down the United States because we're the last bastion of liberty in the world. And so how do you do that? You have to implement these these policies, these ideologies over several generations. G. Edward Griffin. Do you guys know G. Edward Griffin? Yeah, we had him you on wrote, the show once. Yeah, you had him on the show. So he, yeah. you know, so he, so he did a he did an interview with an ex KGB spy who in the eighties who you know laid the whole plan out. What 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 the you know communists plan to do? Back and they, yeah, and yeah, exactly. And they've done it. They they have implemented every plank of the communist manifesto in the United States. And you know you're seeing it in the corporate world. You're seeing it in. In the, the, in the schools and the university, universities are the worst. I yeah. won't send my kids to, to a, a, any university other than a Christian university. Yeah. And, and, and even some of them are falling prey to this stuff too. So yeah. it's, it's a really scary time. So that's why Firefly is so important, you know, cause it's not just going to be some like just remote learning. We want to actually connect educators with homeschool groups. So let's say like, you know, wherever you guys are, let's, let's I don't know, let's say you're in Alabama and let's say you, ha you have kids and, and, and you your kids are part of a, of a local co-op, you know, that co-op could franchise Firefly, become a Firefly chapter, continue doing everything that they already do. But now they have access to a whole new world of curriculum, of games, of opportunities, events, conferences and educators that that are looking to make money and to uh, share their gifts and their talents. And so we can we'll be connecting them through this massive network of educators and creators and families and helping them to be able to teach in person as well, not just remote learning. So, yeah. I mean, we all fit, we all learned during the pandemic that remote learning was a thing and it could work if it was done right. It wasn't done right, but it could work if it was done right. And, uh, and so, you know, th so that will absolutely be a, a, a tenant of the system, but it's also an in-person uh, deal. Yeah. When you talk about the payment system through there for kids and for Creators, do you have your own sort of crypto based in there that you use, or do you do you uh, use just dollars? Or, well, or for to start out with, this is a great question. I'm actually really glad you you asked me this because in the United States, the SEC is incredibly hostile to anyone, any group trying to create their own currency. They they they've basically listed them all except for Bitcoin and maybe Ethereum. They've, they've made them all uh, securities. And so you can't sell unregistered securities. And so if we were to launch a native token for the platform, we would have to do so outside of the U.S. And users in the U.S. would not be able to participate in the Firefly token economy. But, but the, to, for starters, we would be using primarily uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and fiat, like like U.S. dollars or whatever local currency in in whatever country you might be in. So, so we will be accepting payment in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Start starting out, we would ho hopefully expand more as as this problem with the SEC gets worked out over the next few years. Hopefully, it will. I'm optimistic that it will, um, and 
but we will be accepting payment and being able to pay out in that as well. So if someone wants to get paid in Bitcoin, which I would highly recommend, uh, then they can be. The more Bitcoin you have, the the better off you're going to be. There, there, there may come a day down the road in our in our grandchildren's time where the average person will never own an entire Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, it'll just be, you know, it'll be it'll be just so huge. I, I have I have high hopes for Bitcoin. You do eh? over all the other ones, right? You're just you stick to stick to Bitcoin. I've, we've heard, I I, heard I can before. no no because I I can appreciate uh, many other platforms besides Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is the is the one that that is the one that it's been around the longest. It's trusted. It's an incredibly secure system, and it has it has re- held its value. It's grown. It's it's the most it's the most expensive currency. It's the most valuable currency. In the world, I think it's like forty three, forty four thousand dollars today. And again, I remember when it was thirty three cents. So, you know, I, now it it is volatile. It it does react to things happening in the world. I mean, gold and silver are great stores of value, but they're a lousy currency, right? And they 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 hold their price pretty well. They do fluctuate. Every every currency in the world fluctuates. But you know, gold and silver are sound money, and they they are are sound investments. But the I guess the allure of Bitcoin is that it's peer to peer, that every it's the promise of every person be get, getting to be their own bank, and and a decentralized or distributed network is a powerful idea when we've all grown up in through the ages in completely top down centralized systems, especially with banks. And the, and the, and the banks are robber barons. They're thieves, and, and every 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 time their their schemes uh, get, fail, you know we all pay the price for it. You know, so I, I'm I'm a I'm a huge advocate for decentralization. I'm a huge advocate for uh, autonomy and independence, fi- financial independence, and you can find that in in cryptocurrencies. You know, I, I know a lot of people have made a lot of money in cryptocurrencies. How do people get involved in uh, Firefly? So right now, like as I said, uh, we're in development right now. So we actually have devs that are coding, for, probably as we're talking right now. So what we what you can do right now is you can go to our website, which is fireflyedu.org, and you can read all about what we're doing. And there are links to sign up for our community. So we we built this uh, this online community app through uh, the through, through the Circle platform. And we're bringing in a lot of educators. Most of the people in there right now are educators and content creators. There are there are some homeschoolers, but it, it's it's all it's all very new. The, the circle is very very new, and we really haven't rolled out our our marketing campaign yet. So one of the reasons I'm doing podcasts is to just get the word just get the word out, like to do some brand recognition, let people know what we're about. And if it turns you on, if you're excited about this idea that you could homeschool your kids, that there that there's a support network, even if you're a single parent, we're going to be addressing their needs too. Uh, a lot of people think they can't homeschool. We're going to prove you wrong. We're going to help you make it possible for you to unplug from this, you know, horrific system. The system I grew up in, I know it well, uh, but it wasn't anywhere near as bad when I was growing up as as what it is now. Now it's 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 openly satanic. You know, and so, you know, we, we have to take a stand against these people and what they're what they're trying to do to these little children, you know, and, I mean, and not just little children, all I mean, it's all the way up through the university. So one of our long term plans is is as a Firefly University for sure. And so if you want to support what we're doing, there, there's a lot of things you can do. Number one, I would say, come be part of the community, share your story. What is your homeschooling story? What is your school story? And what about this project is exciting to you? We want to hear from people. Two, we are selling uh, merch to to raise more more money. I mean, I'm in the middle of a seed round for funding. You know, we, we we've raised quite a bit, but we still have we still have a ways to go to meet our full goal uh, for the next year. And I, I I'm confident that's going to come together over the next couple of months. But in the meantime, if you're not an investor. Uh, but you'd like to support us, you can you can buy merch. We've got T-shirts and hoodies and all kinds of good stuff that you can get uh, through through the Circle app and through through, through our community. And we, we also have a an NFT collection that we're selling. And NFTs are that stands for non fungible tokens. It's essentially a crypto asset 
that's not like not like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a fungible uh, token, which means one is like another, just like dollars are fungible. One is worth what another one's worth. Non fungible assets are like paintings. And paintings have their own intrinsic uniqueness and their own intrinsic value. And so we're selling a, a, a small collection of 500 Firefly NFTs that represent a lifetime membership on the platform and that represent first access to everything we do, guaranteed VIP treatment at any conferences and events that we do. It's like the golden ticket to the chocolate factory for this platform. So it's like the highest level of membership. And we're selling those for uh, for one ETH a piece, one Ethereum a piece. So people can buy those and they become then part of our inner circle and part of our, our, our founders community, uh, which is which is, you know, it's exciting that we, you know, we we've sold quite a few of them, but we still have a few left. If, if people are interested, you can get them right through our website. It's the fireflyedu.org slash NFT. Can so, people directly invest? Yes. Accredited investors can can directly invest. Yes. OK. Interesting. It's fascinating. Would would this be usable for people in, in kind of like a part time way? Like, what if you wanted to supplement your kids' education with with good stuff? I mean, would would people be able to use it's, it? Like, yeah, it's perfect for that. It's absolutely suited for that because a lot of people who have been homeschooling for a long time they've already got it figured out. They they, they found their stride, and they can use Firefly for all of its um, features, all of its you know, all of the content that we'll have. The, the events, I mean, the, there, there's a lot of opportunities that will be just take advantage of as a secondary, um, you know, supplemental aspect to their, to their uh, kids' education. But there's a lot of folks that have only just left the public school system recently, and I we, we were one of those people years ago. Like, like I mean, we were... <laughs> That's a funny way of saying it. My wife and I experienced that years ago and it was hard guys. It was really hard because when you're first starting out, you don't know what you're doing. You're, you're full of self doubt. Where do I even begin? And there's a lot of trial and error. There's a lot, you make a lot of mistakes. You, you beat yourself up about it. And so we want to address all the pain points that parents who are new homeschooling parents are facing and so we're really designing it around the the entire experience. But it, if you already have your your uh, system down, you can just use Firefly for whatever you wanted to use it for. Yeah, right, right. So for example, like we have a friend, a friend Randall Carlson. I don't know if you ever heard of Randall Carlson. He's he he wants to build it. He, he wants to build like a real school for kids too, and to teach right. them stuff like sacred geometry stuff that doesn't really get taught anymore right he he's had this experience where he, he teaches kids this stuff and he wants to make like a you know like a real school and i i still think there there would probably be a way to fit that in with somebody building like a, a separate school too right where you could absolutely of... and guys e even even public school organizations or public school teachers could It'd take advantage of, of of features on firefly you know yeah. it, it's not we're, we're not preventing anyone from from enjoying what we're going to be offering but we are drawing a very defined line in the sand you shall not pass on these on these <laughs> issues okay i will stand there with like gandalf with my staff <laughs> you know it's like, you shall not pass so but yeah i mean anyone can take advantage of this and we would love to partner with like-minded learning institutions and I mean, there, there's there's so many people out there that we could be amplifiers for. I, I've talked to so many content creators and folks that actually have brick and mortar centers that they run a particular program. It's not yeah. a K through 12 all encompassing program. It's like it's 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 a very specific, specific program, yeah. but we can be a force multiplier for those programs an amplifier for those programs, having them on our system because we will be spending the ad dollars to bring people in and then basically handing them an audience and yeah. we're, we're just super excited about there's so many great programs out there that we, that we intend to have on the platform, so many offerings. Uh, and, and we're, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very exciting time. Awesome. When's the hard launch date then? If you're, when's the, like the hard, well, so our hard launch date, it potentially is going to be the first quarter of 2025. So we're going to be spending this whole next year getting 
everything just completely built. We've already built a lot of the components of it uh, over the last two years, but there's a lot of development that goes into, you know, the, the, the intense functionality of a platform like this. This isn't just, you know, a couple of clicks and that's your user experience. I mean, this is a very immersive system and th there, there's so much that needs to be programmed and needs to be all tied together. So we're going to be spending the, the bulk of this coming year doing that. And I'm hoping to have beta testing happening in uh, in Q4 of, of 24. And depending on what our beta testing reveals and what kind of refinements we need to make, hopefully we can we can do at least a soft launch in 2025 20, uh, in the first quarter. That, 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 that is our hope. That makes sense. I'm optimistic. So you went right from, I want to get back a little bit to your, to your story back from almost like, let's say 15, 20 years ago, you went from no politics, like you didn't go through the traditional, like, you know, liberal to conservative to libertarian. You just kind of went from, from really no politics to like jump in with Ron Paul. Hardcore, man. I, I, I mean, I think, I, I think my parents were Democrats growing up and that they became Republicans over time. <laughs> but I wanted nothing to do with it. In fact, there were, there were times I would go into like Washington DC and I would see people protesting and I would be like, Oh man, these people have,